I was born uh, in a, a small town in the eastern Transvaal called Ermelo. So the language we spoke at home was Zulu language, which I think uh, most of you do know something about. It's, uh, this town is in the eastern Transvaal called Emelo. It's about 200 k's from Swaziland. So I was born there and uh, I went to school there f until I was doing standard uh, four. And then after that I moved to another town called Staniton, also in the Transvaal. And uh, after there, I, I, I was in Staniton until I did my standard eight. After that, I went to Newcastle. That is Newcastle. It's situated in Natal, about uh, 300 k's from Johannesburg, which is where I met Richard, my producer. How did you start playing music? Well, I started playing music when I was about eight years old, but there was just uh, singing in local bands where I lived, but professionally I started in 1979. What type of music did you play in the beginning and how? Well, now the thing is, in 1979, I met my uh, producer, who, the guy who is my producer now, Richard Siluma. I met him, he was with a band uh, called the Love Brothers, so they were playing uh, um, Bakanga kind of music, which was very popular kind of music back home. Every band used to play that kind of music. And so when I joined uh, this band, I started by playing drums and doing backing vocals and things like that. It's only in 1982 that I recorded uh, my, my, my own solo album. Which was the first album you recorded? My first album that I recorded was called Gudala uh, Ngunenga, which was uh, in the Mpakanga kind of music. That's a Zulu soul music. It was called Gudala Ngunenga. <laughs> what does it mean? Well, Gudala Ngunenga means I've been begging you for a long time. So after this first album, um, what other uh, albums you recorded? Well, after I recorded, uh, having recorded this very first album, I was uh, recording an album every year. So I have about uh, five or six albums in, uh, in Mbakanga. Because the second one I recorded was Lengane uh, Tu and Abatagati. And uh, I can't remember all of them because it's a long time back. I can't remember all of them. But it's about five or six uh, Zulu albums that I recorded. Reggae music uh, came to me in 1984 because all along I was playing this um, Balkanga. But it's only in 1984 that I changed and do reggae. Now the thing is, back home, uh, since Mbakanga was the very popular kind of music, so any band, a, any upcoming band was, was doing the same kind of music. Like when you live in Jamaica, you know reggae music being the only kind of music that you can play. So it happened to me in that way. Back home I played Mbakanga, but after some time, uh, in 1984, this kind of music became somewhat, uh, uh, people get bored because of this music, because every band was playing it, everyone was playing this kind of music, and so people turned not to, to like it anymore. So now, even if I had a message that I wanted to send through to people, it, it wouldn't come through properly because people didn't like it, and so I thought I should try and seeing something fresh, something that the people don't know about, something that will come to them as something new, that will make them listen to me. And so it was only possible through reggae, because no one was doing reggae in South Africa before I started. The first album I made in, in reggae was called uh, Rustus Never Died. This one was bent 
because they said I'm pro promoting Rastafarianism, which they actually don't like coming I mean, back home there. And so the, there's a black radio station called Radio Zulu and another one, Radio Tswana, Peri and all. Those are the radio stations really that play a lot of reggae music. They've got uh, reggae programs on their stations and uh, they are the stations that play reggae music. So Lucky, would you regard yourself as a Rastafarian? Well, yes, I do regard myself as a Rastafarian. Though at the moment I still have a problem because like I said, uh, back home Rastafarians are, are not really uh, welcome. And so the problem I have at the moment is that I don't know much about the Rastafarian way of life, I mean the culture and uh, everything. And so it's only now that I'm I'm starting to be exposed to people who know the, the Rastafarian way of life and the culture, so I'm still learning about it. Because back home we ain't got no books and uh, we don't have Rastafarians, I mean people who can tell me more about uh, uh, the, the culture and, and, and things like that. So I'm still learning about it, because it's, it's the kind of life I want. That's why I consider myself as a Rasta. Uh, there's some kind of uh, similarity between Rasta and uh, my Zulu tradition. And one thing I like about Rasta is that it's, a, it's, a, a, it's got a feeling of togetherness every time, you know, which is, which is my principal aim in life of uh, getting people together. So that's what I find in, in, in Rastafari. I mean, the, the feeling of togetherness. That's what really attracts me towards Rastafarianism. Do you think you'll continue playing reggae music for a long time, or in fact, you think you may make a change in a couple of years like you did before? Uh, well, I think now reggae is me. I am reggae, I'm gonna play reggae for the rest of my life because that's the only kind of music that uh, makes me happy, that's the only kind of music that I can express my feelings to my people with because I, I, I'm not singing because I can or maybe I was given the chance to sing but I, it's a kind of expressing my feelings to my people and on behalf of my people so I think uh, I'm gonna work for my people for the rest of my life, so I ain't gonna change now. I am reggae and reggae is me.